This week on West of Nowhere, we talk about the presidential debates, uh, the Supreme Court striking down decades-old laws about regulations, and also laws about uh, government officials receiving quote-unquote bribes, Oklahoma and Louisiana state mandating um, religious things in schools like the Ten Commandments or learning about the Bible, West Virginia couple who was arrested for trafficking slash enslaving potentially their uh, five foster children, their African-American foster children. Um, also, Etsy is banning some um, <laughs> some interesting items off of their store, so be sure to listen for that story. Dr. Disrespect and his uh, Twitch ban and Paris Olympics ban on air conditioners. And then on this week's Am I the Asshole? A person questions whether they're they're inconsiderate of their family because they're sharing news about themselves. We also want to thank Pantera Girl, Colton Zamersla, Andres Baez, The God, Kevin Garahan, Chantel and Mark Stadler, Colby Jordan, Kylie Gangwish, Reverend Professor J. Uh, Rusty Lugnuts, and uh, Adam Pacino. All right. Thanks. Check it out. I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Welcome back, kids and coaches, to another episode of West of Nowhere. I am Levi. And I'm Shane. Yeah. yeah. We're back. It's uh, almost the time to blow off some fingers, you know? Yeah. Fourth of July's coming up, baby! Uh, so this is my proof of fingers before okay, next weekend. Yeah. So if we have less fingers, you know what happened. Um, either that or we... I don't know. What? what we did... <laughs> Get we captured. got it caught by a fucking spy agency or something, and they or, took one of our fingers. Or saw. Saw. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're cutting like, one of your fingers off to live or some shit, you know? Yeah. Dude, I I get that they're not objectively good movies, but they are pretty fun. Um, to just, so, I mean. <laughs> the first two are fucking, I think, Phenomenal. solid. But then, yeah. then they just get in the weeds. It gets real weird. There's yeah. so much, like extra shit that I don't think needs to be in there. Is the second one where they have that house that they're locked in? Uh, I With cannot the pit remember. of needles that they throw that girl in? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then yeah. that guy gets burnt to death in that furnace or whatever the fuck. Yep, okay. That was, that one was perfect. I liked that one a lot. Um, yeah, it did start to get super weird, and then, um, and <laughs> I don't remember one, but the, what, what number it was, but, um, there was one where they was like pig slop that they like were churning up dead pig bodies and it was like gonna drown the guy. Ugh. And right around the time that I had watched that, my mom started making this thing called green chicken chili, which looked the exact same, and I could not <laughs> eat it. Like, I was like, I get that this tastes good, but also it looks disgusting, and I want to yeah. throw up. I would if I like. Because she would, like, get offended by it, and I'm like, I guess I will douse it in, like, all of the sour cream to brighten up the color and add mm -hmm. a bunch of, like, shredded cheese in there to make it look consumable. But I fuck – and, <laughs> and she, I feel like she made it every night for, like, six weeks straight. I know that's not realistic, but it felt like that. Like, she was always making this stuff, and I'm like, I want to throw up. Not only because it looks like dead pigs, <laughs> <laughs> but also I'm tired of fucking eating it. It's like, you know, when you're like you eat one meal for a long time because it's cheap and easy to do or whatever, like hot dogs or ramen. Some people can't eat that after I just ate too much before, you know, when I was yeah. poor or whatever. <laughs> yeah, as I say, it was probably like it was really cheap to make. Oh, I assume it was, but it was just annoying. It's always there, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, let's uh, let's get into some. Uh, we've got uh, some YouTube comments that I want to yeah. read, and I'm gonna start with our good old faithful T Ferg, um, <laughs> which uh, his uh, this comment is in relation to the Am I the Asshole story, where the girl put the, the plastic pizza tray thing in the oven. Yeah. 
And he says, not the asshole, but she's also not the first to do that. There are far too many pictures out there of plastic cutting board in oven because someone thought the same as her. Glad he wasn't charged for the fire department. As for microwave pizzas, there are Kroger brand pizzas that are specifically made for the microwave. Not exactly great quality, though, which makes sense. Um, and I was so I had bought a uh, pizza from hy which is I don't know if you have that anywhere near you, but so it's just like a fancier grocery store, like okay, a, like higher quality. Um, and they do like pre-made pizzas, like take take and bake ones, but they're yeah. like pretty decent and they're 11 bucks so so i got this <laughs> i did the most levi move possible and i got a crab rangoon pizza and fucking slapped first so of all. but <laughs> that was an actual pizza i thought yeah the, i thought <laughs> yeah. it was a mislabel <laughs> no it was like it had like the the cream cheese as a base and then it had um yeah it was i mean i'll probably have a heart attack next week but very good um okay and in the pizza they serve it in this like it's not cardboard but it it's that it's like that material they the drink carriers from fast food places okay you know where it's like paper mache almost yeah yeah so they have that and then there's like a plastic cover well they say take the plastic cover off and put it in the oven and i'm like i had a moment where i was like uh, i don't like it like this is gonna catch on fire in here <laughs> and then i'm gonna look like an asshole uh but i risked it for the biscuit i put the whole tray in there took the plastic off obviously but um i even made sure to peel all of the paint because there's like a sticker that takes mm. the like seals it and i had like made sure to peel all of that off of the the cardboard box thing and um cooked it and it turned out great you know, uh, yeah. I was I was pleasantly surprised. It didn't even like, didn't even smolder or anything. It was like they, it was kind of smart marketing a little bit. Like, <laughs> hey, just fucking pop this plastic off, put it in there, and you're good to go. But I did have second thoughts as soon as I <laughs> read that. I was like, there's no fucking way this this is probably gonna blow up in my face, literally. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he continues. Um, he says, I feel like the, the guy with the 16 on the ASVAB knows not to put plastic cutting board in the oven. Here's the thing. I don't think so. You got to talk to these people, man. There was a guy, I, and this was before they lowered all of the, the scores down to let more yeah. people in. But there was a guy who basically got like no child left behind it into a school. Oh, I don't wow. know what happened to him after that, but he was in a school. And when I tell you that this guy was literally bad at everything, his room <laughs> was a shithole, like, completely. Which is hard to do because you literally live inside one room, like, dorm lifestyle with another person, maybe two. Yeah. And, th like, <laughs> the second, like, anything starts to get a little whack, like, they put you in check, like, pretty quick. Yeah. Or at least, like, I did or mine did. Like, everybody's kind of like, hey, are you going to pick that up? Are you going to do this? Whatever, blah, blah, blah. This guy was constantly failing room inspections in a school, which is like, you don't have anything. So, like, how are you fucking up? Like, you have only the same stuff you had in boot camp. Yeah. And and they don't fuck around in boot in a school when you fail no, room inspections, dude. Like, like, yeah, they go hard. Like, it's a little different when you get out to the fleet and then it's like, all right, man, hey, you probably should fail this one, but just make sure you clean this shit up or, blah, 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 or whatever. Yeah, or you mm -hmm. get to re-inspect and then you pass. It's fine. Yeah. But a school they fucking pull everybody out of the whole barracks and then the, everybody goes through it like shame all the, shame yeah, yeah. <laughs> and oh man i wish i could remember the guy's name but there was a am one who was in charge of our barracks and yeah he had like the coolest mustache kind of looked like stone cold a little bit um <laughs> <laughs> and that's the bottom lot no so <laughs> he would fuck it he was like hardcore about it though yeah and this guy that I'm talking about was also supposed to be an airframer. I don't think he ever made it through a school as an airframer, though. I think they dropped him. Mm -hmm. um, but he, <laughs> like, his room was a shithole. He had polished his boots with his dress whites. Wait. Yeah. I'm going to let you absorb that one. Yeah. No. Yeah. Ha with what part? The pants. 
the pant no leg. way dude. yeah just ruined them huh yeah god and damn. then tried to like wash them and then wore them to a inspection yeah like while stained black yeah no fucking way <laughs> yeah dude it, i i was blown away by it too like it was i was like there's no fucking way this guy actually did that and like when i talked to him it's like i don't just this is something missing here something i don't yeah. know what it is but and that guy didn't have a 16 on the abs bed, but i guarantee he would have put plastic cutting board in the other wow. so when you say you feel like the guy with the 16 on the abs bed probably wouldn't do it i beg to differ on that <laughs> it's a real drawn out story but it, i wanted to paint a very clear dude picture. yeah wow yeah yeah and i i haven't thought about that guy in a long time but his comment made me think about that i'm like eh, i know a guy um society of cryptid hunters podcast says pizza rolls are the only pizza that should ever be allowed in the microwave especially in fallon nevada long live the thunderdome with a rock and roll emoji which Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> As a uh, permanent member of the uh, Thunderdome neighborhood, um, <laughs> like the amount of, like every squadron or every debt to Fallon thinks that they do it the hardest. But really, the people that live there do it the hardest because they do party at the Thunderdome with every transient group that is ever there. Yeah. Had a lot of, That's gotta a lot be of memories wild, that I don't dude. remember. <laughs> <laughs> just every every couple weeks there's a new fucking just batch of Shit 300 show. people. <laughs> yeah. It's a big old fuck fest, dude. I remember we were over there one day and we were playing uh flip cup in the laundry room. Yeah. And I was like I'm kind of kind of thirsty but like i don't want like i want another drink in addition to the alcohol I'm drinking. Yeah. And they have those vending machines. So it's like I'm going to go to the vending machine real quick and there's like a gap between the vending machine and the wall on one side. Okay. And there was two ladies finger blasting each other in there. And I was like, I'm not that thirsty. I'll leave it. <laughs> like, they, <laughs> like I ran to the corner and I was like, ah, okay, see ya. <laughs> and so, pretty cool. <laughs> uh, that's insane, man. Yeah. And that's just like one day. And it, <laughs> I was there for two years. <laughs> <laughs> so then like when people when now when people are like why don't you drink i'm like i i promise you i me drinking here is not going to be as exciting as it has ever been you know like there's no <laughs> there's no way <laughs> oh my and, god yeah uh last comment says from your <laughs> andres Fias, the god says if she don't hawk to her, i don't want to talk to her and this is kind of piggybacking on that thing we were talking about last yeah. week where there's a lot of jokes that get spun out. And I've seen this one a lot, but uh, I just wanted to leave it last because I know you are sick of that girl. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, our buddy made his gamer tag, Hawk Tua, and we essentially bullied him into changing his name back. <laughs> <laughs> How long did he have it set for? maybe three days jesus like <laughs> the just every time... time you guys would get on <laughs> the very first time i logged on and joined their party and he was in there i was like who the fuck is hawk Tua?" and it's my buddy matt and he was like oh it's you know it's funny and i was like you're so fucking unoriginal like i just went <laughs> <laughs> just went in on him <laughs> and i found out uh last night actually that his wife had told him it was stupid that's and then when I logged on and told him it was fucking dumb, he was like, I'll change it if you want me to, Shane. And she yeah. got fucking mad. She could hear him saying that. <laughs> oh, you'll change it if Shane wants you to, but not him. <laughs> oh, my God. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. How fun. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> I've i never, like, really cared about making, like, super funny uh, gamer tags, except for... Um, and this wasn't even, like, on Xbox. Well, I guess it kind of was. On the original Xbox, on Halo 2, yep. you could um, add a guest on your account, and you could and they could just make whatever name they want, and they would play with you. But yep. it was just, like, a split version of the same account. Um, and I would go over to my buddy's house, and I would always change my name to something real stupid because I thought it was funny how the, the little um, death 
list, like, people who kill other people. Like, I thought it was funny how it phrased it, so it was like, so-and-so killed this person, so-and-so, like, if you hit somebody said with a car, by, splattered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. splattered <laughs> so, by, yeah, yeah. So, like, I, like one of them, the, the one that is most prominent in my brain, I just made it a Girl Scout. And so it's like you just got killed by a Girl Scout, or a Girl Scout <laughs> splattered this person, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. beat down this guy. <laughs> I just like got, so, and even if I died a lot, it was still pretty funny. Like this guy beat down a Girl Scout. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun, a lot of fun yeah. for me. But um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so should we get into the the fun the fun stuff in our in our world? Yeah, let's get into this. Um, I don't know if you watch the debate at all or any clips or anything but we're doomed um (laughs) i I feel like it's not going well but you know it's it's cool we're having fun um the best (laughs) clip i think is from the golf commentary that we had so i got this pulled up here Cognitive tests, I aced him, <laughs> both of them, as you know. I, we made it public. He took none. I'd like to see him take one, just one, a real easy one. The look on, the look on the his face. The first five questions, he couldn't do it. But I took two cognitive tests. I took physical exams every year. And, you know, we knock on wood wherever we may have wood. That I'm in very good health. I just won. Where, wherever we may have wood. I put we knock on. Like, the way he fucking just rambles from one thing to another (laughs) is unmatched completely yeah championships not even senior two regular club championships to do that you have to be (laughs) quite smart and you have to be able to hit the ball a long way and i do it he doesn't do it he can't hit a ball 50 yards he challenged me to a golf match he can't hit a ball 50 yards uh i think i'm in very good shape i feel that i'm as in good a shape as i was 25 30 years ago actually i'm probably a little bit lighter but i'm in as good a shape as I was uh, years ago. I feel very good. I feel the same. But I took, I was willing to take a cognitive (laughs) test. And you know what? If I didn't do well, I aced him. Dr. Ronnie Jackson, who's a great guy when he was White House doctor. And then I took another. Dude, this guy just fucking rambles and rambles and rambles. It is a minute straight of him just saying nonsense. And people are like, that's the guy. (laughs) <laughs> and then fucking Biden's face, he's just like, holy shit. But, you know, he, he stutters and can't put together a train of thought. And then so our options are this dude who's clearly like, I don't know, he's got like Coke brain where he just like rambles and rambles. Yes. One thought slightly disconnected from the next. <laughs> and like, oh, man. So... I yeah, they saved. talked about golf for like ten minutes. Um, <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know where I saved it at, and I wish I could find it. But I found a TikTok, and it's from remember that old di- that old show called Dinosaurs. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a pres and it's a it's a clip from one of their shows about a presidential presidential debate, and uh, it's perfect. It's like uh, it says like we ha- we have one old. Oh shit. We have, like, one old dude who can't fucking speak, and we have one psychotic dude, and it clips to both of them, and I was like, this is... Yeah. I, think I, say, I think I shared it on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, shit. I like uh, the one where it was a picture of, um, like, a rotten orange, and then just, like, the Crypt Keeper <laughs> from Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> that one, pretty great. Um, yeah, it doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence, I don't think, and then also it's just kind of like... These are the these are these are really the two best people we got. Like I understand that, you know, the DNC just decides that they're like, well, obviously the incumbent is the de facto runner for the Democratic Party. But I think that should stop. I think when I was talking to my brother about this the other day, and I saw somebody who said uh, the first party that figures out that they can, or the first party that actually decides to get rid of their current like runner yeah is probably the one who will win if they did it and i think that's pretty accurate i think people are as much as people are obsessed with trump i think there's (laughs) so many like like 
you say that you can say what you want about how Biden stutters and shit, yeah. but Trump does the same fucking shit. And not only that, but he just spews out so much nonsense that it all sounds funny. And like, if you connect a couple words, you're like, yeah, man. But then <laughs> it's like you like really look into what he's saying. It's utter nonsense, completely made up, or, you know, just shit talking and like, okay, well, he didn't actually say anything of substance, so what the fuck? So, we're, we're doing great. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun stuff going on. Um, and, in conjunction with that, the Supreme Court's been doing a lot of cool stuff uh, in the last couple of days. Like what? <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the... <laughs> The Supreme Court has struck down a couple of major things in the past um, couple of years, and they have continued this trend. They overturned a, um, a decision, which was 40 years old, the Chevron decision, which is basically the Chevron decision, in summary, like, put the experts of the fields in charge of regulations before it was people would bring lawsuits to courts and be like hey this isn't how it should be this is how it should be and here's why and basically a judge would go okay it's like a civil case not like an actual like criminal trial but a civil case where they're okay. like all right well like your points made the most sense so you win like that kind of thing okay and that's how regulations were decided everywhere and then the chevron decision happened and then you started getting these um governing bodies like the um, the agencies that oversee different areas, like the Environment Protection Agency, is one of these, you know, things that's probably the most infamous one. But um, this this ruling they struck down puts it back into the hands of small courts, which you could make an argument it might work out well that way. But also, um, <laughs> they also struck down a different decision, which allows um, government officials like to essentially get donations from people um <laughs> it's they didn't they said that the original ruling was a uh not bribes but um <laughs> what the, they fucking they phrased it real interesting and i was yeah. like oh, okay uh <laughs> it's gratuity it's not a bribe it's gratuity so essentially the <laughs> is an anti-corruption law which had barred officials from taking gifts for past favors. Yeah. That seems pretty cut and dry to me. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, no, actually, you know what? You can do that. And it's weird <laughs> because uh, there's a member of the Supreme Court who has been given quite a few gifts in his day. So it's interesting. So when you combine these two, where <laughs> uh, federal or, um, you know, legislative officials law officials can now get gifts for how they've you know handled things uh and that they are also in charge of a lot of um regulations regulations it's Damn. uh can yeah might get might get pretty fun i think the probably the places that are going to get hit with uh, some interesting things because of this the most are probably going to be um, places where large manufacturing uh, takes place. There's going to be a lot of different um, interesting ways of getting rid of, <laughs> like, you know, materials that would otherwise have to be disposed of safely or, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, you, you mean the regulation says we can't, like, <laughs> bulldoze this uh, this fucking natural lake or whatever like yeah you know a lot of shit like that so that's pretty cool um i <laughs> can't can't imagine where that that will go wrong um and then and then louisiana and oklahoma are having a who can be the most ridiculously christian indoctrinating states where no yeah uh louisiana which they have a pretty low education rating anyway but um they uh are instituting putting in the ten commandments in all the schools so even like not the private ones just the public ones which is 
its own issue. So, <laughs> and then Oklahoma, not to be outdone, was like, "Hey, you, uh, the state superintendent said, hey, all, all the schools have to have the Ten Commandments and the Bible in the curricul in a curriculum." So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, pretty cool. I'm really excited what to uh, to see what the uh, Satanic Temple does with something like this, um, <laughs> because you know they're always like do they do the. Uh, well, you, you said we have to have a fucking cr Christian Christmas thing in the state capitol, so here's our satanic one. You know, they, they always, like, have that yeah. corresponding action. So, hey, it's religious freedom, so <laughs> it'll be... Yeah, not if you force everyone to learn about just one religion. That's kind of shitty. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because they're, like, religious freedom, and then it's not, like, it doesn't click that that means you can practice every religion freely, but... You know, rules for thee, not for me. So, yep. ooh, yeah. Anyway, pretty cool, pretty cool <laughs> stuff. We're going back to 1860, which is exciting for this West Virginia couple who, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, this is kind of sad, actually. Uh, well, white couple, I don't know why I had to emphasize white, Good because job. they are from West Virginia, have been accused of child neglect after allegedly forcing their adopted black children to work and locking them in a barn no yeah get the fuck out man yeah this Couldn't the wait husband June was 60 over? come on <laughs> i know right the, the the husband 63 and the wife 62 uh both pleaded not guilty what? but um yeah it's, it doesn't look great um but some of the charges are human trafficking of a minor child using a minor child and forced labor child neglect Creating su substantial risk of serious mm -hmm. bodily injury or death. So yeah, um, and human trafficking doesn't just mean you're selling them as, you know, sex yeah, force them. Yeah, well, force them. Yeah, yeah, forceful labor. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know it. <laughs> it definitely like people are like, whoa, it's about that, but it's not always. Um, still pretty not great. Uh, yeah, there's. Let's see. I think five, uh, a six-year-old, a nine-year-old, eleven-year-old, fourteen-year-old, and sixteen-year-old. Yeah, five. So, pretty gross. But it's in West Virginia, so God, am I surprised? Not really. But also another state who has really low education scores. Who would have thought? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pretty fun stuff, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. So here's a. I mean, this one's not as bad, but I don't think it's really bad unless you make if you have a store on etsy and you sell dildos it might be a, a bad problem but uh etsy is the store the online retailer is to ban the sale of most sex toys explicit content and more uh the article says but um anything that is can be applied to the genitalia designed for genitals or to be inserted uh is prohibited so that's literally anything sex toy related yeah i don't know why etsy is a haven for these things but it is pretty interesting it also makes me think of this uh anecdote that one of the this <laughs> this am2 that i worked with in fallon he was like yeah my uh my mom works at a amazon warehouse and she's like all of her like pretty much all of her day is just putting dildos in boxes <laughs> like oh all right, cool. Which man. is crazy because you would not think that 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 people would be ordering dildos that often. Yeah, you know I, I mean? think like, she worked in like a pretty busy metro area, which like where they would be then mailed oh, out. Oh, like a dispersion very, center. Okay. Yeah, not not just like the local <laughs> Amazon one, but like an actual like distribution center where it's going to be sent to another. Even hub then, or like how but, is there? How is the dildo? like market still <laughs> flourishing like how many like do well, they go the thing i don't feel like they go bad that often like obviously i don't have one to really know but <laughs> yeah you know i'm you turn your camera and it just looks like a e-girls like <laughs> dungeon of just giant dildos all over <laughs> <laughs> just gonna, <laughs> just gonna, just gonna <laughs> turn the camera. Oh, my camera died. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I think the issue is, is a. There's obviously not just one. You know, you you got options, right? And the other problem is, is that 
it's not just ladies buying them. There's probably dudes buying them. I get that. I'm not. Yeah. And a lot of people are horny and sad, so they buy dildos about it, you know? I know, but how many different dildos do you really need? You know what I'm saying? Like big, <laughs> small, smooth, veiny, you, ribbed. <laughs> you've, you've watched porn. They always got like a whole bed of them on there that they don't even use half of them. You know what I mean? It's like, there's no way you're using oh. all of these today. Double sided. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ass to ass. Dude, every time I think <laughs> about that, I think about Requiem for a Dream and fucking, what is that, Rachel Connolly? Is that her name? Oh, uh, Jennifer Connolly. Jennifer Connolly. And Keith David. That dude. dude. <laughs> ass to ass. Ass to ass. Dude, somebody had not seen that movie, and I tried to explain to them what was going on in that scene, and it's not great. <laughs> yeah. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have watched that movie at like 13, but, you know, here we are. Mm. So, <laughs> God. <laughs> that it is it is such a like i don't even know like it's an emotional movie to watch like in of itself but also like it's even weirder when you get into like adulthood and you've like maybe had friends that have lived not that extreme of a lifestyle but like people who have gone down the the heavy drug path or yeah maybe you dabbled or whatever and it's like god damn this movie <laughs> was fucked up <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll still watch it, but it's like I gotta watch it once a year, you know. It's gotta, gotta like palate cleanse with all of Disney Plus or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, speaking of someone who went down the wrong path, have you Hell been yeah. hearing about Doctor Disrespect? You know what? I was thinking about talking about that, but I'm glad you brought him up. <laughs> uh, tell tell me about Doctor Disrespect. Uh, so I. I don't, I don't know the entire backstory, but I know that he was banned from Twitch, right? Yeah. And then he went on this like smear campaign on YouTube about how, uh, about how like you know he he quit Twitch, he didn't get banned, you know, blah 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 yeah. blah. Well, a couple of days ago, he tweeted out that he got banned from Twitch because, uh, in his like Twitch whispers, he was exchanging messages with a with a, a minor female. Yeah. Uh, they don't. I don't think they released what the this age. guy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, not he, the guy with the mullet and the pit vipers. Dude, look That's up, crazy. <laughs> now look up Miss Assassin, his oh, wife. Okay. Miss. Assassin. Should that come up. Wrong. Whoa. That's his wife. Well, you see, I don't understand why people who. <laughs> She's a smoke show. Yeah, who get involved with people like this end up always being chomos, dude. I don't get it. Your wife's a smoke show. Why are you like this? And so the reason why it was kept on the DL for so long is because the people at Twitch that found the messages uh, did so illegally. Oh. Like, they weren't supposed to be monitoring his messages. They were, found he was doing something wrong, banned him for it. So then he turned around and tried to sue Twitch. And so because he was suing Twitch, he couldn't talk about it, like what was really going oh, on. Gotcha. And they finally yeah. settled. And he tweet he tweeted out this like long ass tweet. Have you read it? Mm -mm. I don't want to read all of it. Yeah. But essentially he admits to messaging this girl. Uh he says, Were there twist messages with an individual minor back in twenty seventeen? The answer is yes. Were there real intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not. These were casual uh -huh. and mutual conversations that sometimes lean too much in the direction of being inappropriate. What does that even mean? To be fair, that's like, such a like such a <laughs> cop out too. It's like when Wayfair was like, "We don't sell kids." Like, it, of <laughs> of course you're gonna say I didn't do it on purpose. Like you fucking ah, it lingered <laughs> too much on inappropriate. That that's the problem <laughs> like hey, you fucking idiot <laughs> you probably didn't intend to have it happen that way but then it did are you telling me this this fucking child manipulated you into having these conversations get fucked dude <laughs> oh man but yeah and so essentially the gaming community is like up in arms for the most part everyone's just like we can't support him and blah 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 which is true you shouldn't yeah. But also, what I don't understand is why everyone cares so much. Like, he got caught. He's not, like, no one's going to, like, his stream is done. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there's, like, no parents are going to let their kids watch this dude anymore. Right. Like, so just let him die. Quit talking about him. 
That's that's yeah. When when you have somebody who has like become so not like notorious for something, and then people feel the need to continue to like have the like we already know. All right, we don't like all you're doing is giving them more like. It also just feels like grandstanding. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Hey. He was do he did a bad thing. Yeah, we yeah. fucking know, dude. That's why he's. Not I don't support on him at all. I'm a streamer and I don't support him. Cool. I yeah. don't care that you don't support him. It's it goes without saying you're not supposed yeah, to support him. Yeah, you should. You <laughs> should not. Like it's uh. <laughs> what's the uh it, grandstanding? There's another term for that. Virtue signaling. Remember. Yeah, that one. Yeah. yeah. I always forget that one, and I don't know why because people <laughs> use it a lot. But also, can I just talk about how his real name's Guy Beam? That's a crazy name. Why did you name yourself Dr. Disrespect? Guy Beam. You could have had like a laser logo or something. I don't know. You fucked up. <laughs> Fucking Beam, dude. Uh, you got beamed. Uh. Uh, <laughs> in other news, uh, are you stoked about the Olympics? I mean, I, I don't really care. Uh, until they decide to put normal people in so we can see how gifted these people are, then I don't care. I mean, I'll probably watch highlights, but why is that? <laughs> uh, so they're supposed to be in Paris this time around. Shit. And yeah. Paris is going green. Go. Wait, what do you mean? There's not going to be any air conditioning in Paris, <laughs> in the Olympic Village. In the Summer Olympics? <laughs> that sounds like a bad move. Uh, this is them. The idea is to ditch air conditioning um, from the city's efforts to make the games an eco-friendly as eco-friendly as possible. However, planners did make it clear they would have innovative, eco-focused cooling solutions. Okay, a wet towel. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my question: Did they also make them row boats across the fucking oceans to get there? Because they flew, so <laughs> like. Your air conditioners are not doing more damage to the environment than the fucking airplanes that they took to get there, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, let's see. So essentially, Team USA is mad about it. Yeah. Go figure. Um, they're... Because <laughs> <laughs> it says here, and quote, it's no secret that the USA loves its air conditioning. <laughs> We do love our air conditioner. I just Dude. bought an air conditioner the other day. Fucking. So I guess to offset that, the airlines are going to let the, at least Team USA. Slide with I don't the know window about... open? <laughs> Slide with the window <laughs> open. <laughs> Boeing's already doing that. That's cool. <laughs> They're actually going to let Team USA bring their own personal, like, plug-in air conditioner. Yeah. <laughs> so she's just going to defeat the purpose. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they said that they... That... The, they're allowed to use alternative cooling methods, which I'm still not understanding what that actually means, but I'm assuming it's like a little box fan or something, but uh, <laughs> very weird. But here's an idea. <laughs> All right. It's the Olympics. Let's just do it old school. If we're going to get rid of the air conditioner, we're going to get rid of the clothes. And Every, yeah, let's naked. just let's just have everyone naked. You know how, yep. dude, that will be the highest watched Olympics. <laughs> There's no way it wouldn't be. Yeah. And <laughs> and you have different competitors every time. Like, it's not always the same people. I mean, yeah. some people will compete in yeah. consecutive Olympics. But think about how much more fun it would be. And, they, you know, the only reason they won't is because that the gear – has been finely tuned to reduce drag in every sport. The speedos, you know, the, really? the fucking hair thing, like all the like. Okay, the they can still wear the hair cap. They can still wear the hair cap. It's fine. Fuck them, dude. No, <laughs> but they're not gonna, the, like because they won't to... because it's like it lets them move. Like the runners, all these things let them move. Dude, the so quickest. Here's what they'll do. Here's what they'll do. The day before their event, they'll have a team of shavers just bick them smooth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a fucking hot wax day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah, now we're oh, thinking. Oh man, Olympics. Our... Let us let us help you, dude. <laughs> Please. <laughs> we have all the ideas, dude. The, the naked Olympics, dude. Yeah, I'll make um, the posters. I just need photos of every athlete naked. <laughs> naked. They won't Dumb. get leaked. It won't I be promise. the fappening 3.0. Yeah. 
They will be safe. I'll have my dog watch them. <laughs> he'll, he'll have a little flash drive on his collar. <laughs> and... <laughs> Oh man! So dumb. <laughs> if you've made it this far, we would like to thank you for doing that and stuff. Yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stop what you're doing. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment. Leave us a review. Do it. It helps us. <laughs> Jesus. Keep doing this. Fucking do it. <laughs> All right. Am I the asshole for what I said? My family won't let me share any good news because of my sister's disability. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Say that again? That, that's the tag. The, I don't know why. It's the worst one I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Say, one more time. Repeat. Am I the asshole forward. for what I said? My family won't let me share any good news because of my sister's disability. That's just the tag. I don't... <laughs> yeah, I'm so I, Like, I needed a second to process it. <laughs> All right. All, All right. right I, 26 go. female, have an older sister, 32 female, who had a tragic accident three years ago that left her paralyzed from the waist down. Mm. It's been rough for everyone, but especially for her... Of fucking course, OFC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A fucking like. Obviously, it's been <laughs> it's been worse for her. <laughs> Our family rallied around her, helping out as much as we can, and I've been there every step of the way because I love her so much. But since the accident, it feels like I don't deserve any to have any good things happen to me, or at least I'm not allowed to talk about them. Every time something positive happens in my life, I get shut down by my family. When I get a promotion at work last year, I was so happy and excited to tell them. I thought my family would be happy for me, but when I t tried to share the news, my mom pulled me aside and told me not now because my sister had a tough day. I ended up uh -oh. keeping it to myself. Oh. Eight months ago, my boyfriend proposed. When I told them, my mom immediately changed the subject, later telling me that my sister was feeling down about her own marriage struggles. It's like anything good in my life is an offense to my sister's situation. Jesus. God damn. That's, that's what it sounds like, too. Yeah. Uh, this happened a few days ago. I've been saving up for years to buy my first car. God, what? You're 26. Okay, yeah. all right. No, I thought the sister was 26 and she was 22. No, she's 26. Her sister's 32. Oh, 32. That's yeah. Okay. I finally managed to do it, and I was so excited. I thought my family would be happy for me, so I decided to tell them. As soon as the words were out of my mouth, the room went dead silent. My mom whispered to me, this isn't the time. Think about your sister. The fuck? Okay. My sister looked so sad, and I instantly felt like the worst person in the world. I just couldn't handle it anymore, and I, I said, Can I share anything good in my life? I thought y'all would be happy for me. No one knew what to say, and I left the house. I've never done that before. Now I'm filled with regret and confusion. I love my sister, and I never want to hurt her, but it feels like I'm not allowed to have anything good happen to me. It's getting to the point where I feel like I'm walking on eggshells all the time. I understand my sister's life has changed drastically, and I'm genuinely supportive, and I've always been there for her. But sometimes I just want to be able to share my own life, too. I right. feel so guilty for even feeling this way, like I'm being selfish or inconsiderate. This thing is long as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her husband and even my parents share things about their lives freely, and no one seems to mind. But as the younger sister, I'm not allowed to share anything good in front of her, so I don't hurt her feelings. I get it. I really do. No, fuck that, dude. Your yeah. sister got hurt. Yeah, and that sucks. But, like, your life is still moving forward, and you're allowed to celebrate. Did, did uh, I... So... The sister got it in a car wreck or something, right? Yeah. But the, was she in there too or no? I guess not. Okay. It doesn't really say. It just says my sister was in a tragic accident. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't understand why your fucking family hates her like that. That's crazy. Um. It. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that one "Am I the asshole" with the the fucking person with cancer or whatever, in the 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 bride. She's like trying to or. I don't remember. She was blaming specific. her sister because her sister is in a wheelchair? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just like, every fucking time she's got something going on, like, you know, and it just kind of had that kind of vibe to it. Yeah. It'd be funny if it was the same. Uh, <laughs> she's just always posting, am I the asshole? Still? Um, <laughs> no, I don't think this person's an asshole. Not I mean, at all. it is kind of wild that every time you have something going on that's always something with your sister and like well it doesn't uh, sound like it's with her sister it sounds like her mom is like shunning her yeah i'm sharing good news hey don't have good things because your sister had a accident one time like yeah well life moves on dude i don't know what to tell you um and <laughs> yeah and also um i this is so you <laughs> you were like hey you're fucking 26 why are you buying your first car Give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe she lived in like a big city and didn't need like a car 
You know, okay, fine. Maybe she lived in like New York or something. I just don't feel like that was like a big deal. It I'm might buying be. a car. No. Maybe that they be the fucking. Maybe she's been poor. Maybe, maybe this is the same girl who just got her fucking GED and she's <laughs> <laughs> got my GED and I'm trying to buy a car. And my mom fucking hates me so. And dad won't buy me a birthday party or whatever it was. Um, oh, I don't know. I, I think the buying the car one was a bad example because it just that's not people buy cars. Like if yeah. you were buying a house or well, your first apartment. Well, here's the thing: apartment. everybody's got a different life, you know. Maybe that is a big achievement for her. You can't downplay her thing. Fuck her. <laughs> are you her mom you piece of shit yeah how dare you share anything good your sister's right you there you know your sister she can hear you crippled okay <laughs> that's so funny. or up, but or here's the thing maybe she was going to share the car thing and she thought it was gonna be good because her sister probably got hurt in a car crash and her mom's like how dare you buy a car yeah you know Cars. what they did to your sister <laughs> You piece of shit. Cars <laughs> hurt your sister. You can't. That's why she didn't have one for uh-huh. so long. Yep. It's all making Dude, sense. It's all coming together. <laughs> We're so dumb. Um, yeah. yeah, that's pretty fucked up. It's like, and especially like, coming to your family and be like, oh my god, my boyfriend just proposed to me. It's yeah, so exciting. Was... And she's just like, anyway, so your sister is fucking, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, your sister's marriage sucks, ugh. so good luck. Yeah, like, like damn. god damn. Yeah, <laughs> fucking can't have nothing around here. Everybody's, everybody's so negative. And, yeah, pretty wild. Uh, yeah, not the asshole. Yeah, I agree. Was is there any big comments? I mean, there's a uh, there's one with eighteen thousand likes. Not Jesus. the asshole, but I'm curious. How does your sister feel about this? Is she genuinely hurt whenever you share these positive things, or is your mom just being overprotective and jumping the yeah. gun? Yeah. Uh. Has there always been that kind of dynamic between you and your sister to a lesser extent before this? It just seems incredibly weird that you're the only person in your family who's not allowed to share good news. Yeah. It does. Is is this also Meg from Family Guy? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, guys, I got a car. Shut up, Meg. Oh, Shut up, Meg. (laughs) (laughs) Got a... And my boyfriend proposed to me. Just fucking leaves. Everybody leaves the room. <laughs> <laughs> your sister's right there. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> really? You got engaged in front of your sister? Fuck. <laughs> you know, oh, the accident yeah. really fucked her up. How dare you get married? Yeah. I can't, I can't imagine being in a situation like that. I would literally just be like, all right. I would have left probably after the first time. Yeah. Like, Okay, like, <laughs> she's had a bad day. I'm getting married, and you're not fucking coming. And how's that sound? See ya. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I imagine if her sister's real bad hurt, she's in, like, a wheelchair, probably. She, yeah. could, she could be the ring bear or the flower girl. Yeah. She could be in she, the wedding. She'd probably be yeah. happy about that. Yeah, and make, include her. Yeah. Just don't let her ride in the limo. <laughs> Too soon. I hate you. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. <laughs> We'd like to thank the Real Creature Feature, Macabre Emporium, Society of Cryptid Hunters, uh, and then obviously the that one, the Remedial Scholar. <laughs> uh, do us a favor, like and subscribe, leave comments, leave reviews. Yeah, let us know how we're doing. Let us know what you want us to do. Tell yeah. us things. Yeah. Let us, the Olympics, let us involve it, be involved in your <laughs> event planning. <laughs> I think you need help, and I think we could do it. <laughs> All right, that's All right, it. That's it. I've had enough. Peace out, bitches. <laughs> Tip your bartender. <laughs> <laughs>